Welcome to the city of Old Charlian. My name's Rook, but today I'll be your tour guide through Final Fantasy XIV's newest city hub, Old Charlian, opening its storied doors to you on November 23rd in the upcoming expansion, Endwalker. A shining seat of knowledge, Charlian stands upon an archipelago in the northern seas. A colony of the same name once flourished in the Dravanian hinterlands, and numbered amongst the six city-states of Eorzea prominent in the latter half of the last era. However, its halls stand empty, as the sons and daughters of the nation have been called homewards. Now Charlian watches the turning of the world, but refuses to change the course of its events. Encyclopedia Eorzea The nation of Charlian is made up of three islands, Charlian itself, the largest of the isles, the Isle of Ham to the north, the Isle of Yorn to the south, and the Isle of Val, which once existed east of Charlian until it vanished early in the seventh astral era. The isle would later emerge from the life stream and be initially mistaken for a new island and called Eureka. The Charlian government is selective in what knowledge it is willing to share with other nations. It is implied that sharing knowledge without sanction is considered treason. This isolationist stance is due to the dominant Bibliotech faction, who advocate hoarding knowledge and observing history from the sidelines. But to understand Charlian's role in the future, we must first look to the past. Long ago, a towering Rugadin from beyond the northern wastes named Nuncrepf Nuncrepfsen used astrology to foresee the impending flood that was the sixth umbral calamity. He and his companions, twelve heroic figures known as the Twelve Archons, built an Ark, which they sailed to Eorzea to rescue all they could. Day after day, they desperately pulled survivors from the waters until a great wave reared up and threatened to destroy their vessel. Out of desperation, Nuncrepf cast an ancient and powerful magic that teleported the entire ship atop Abalathia's spine in the peaks. In Girabanya, the group witnessed the vicious conflict between other refugees fleeing from the Calamity. Survivors fought and killed one another over scarce food and precious resources. Nuncrepf and his acolytes fled, building a new ship in the Dravanian hinterlands before making their way back to the northern islands. Having returned home at last, Nuncrepf and the survivors set about building a small settlement. This humble village was to grow into the mighty city of Charlian. The citizens of the newly named Charlian pledged themselves to Nuncrepf's teachings, to forever renounce war and walk in the light of wisdom and reason. In the central hub of the city of Old Charlian, burbling fountains accompany the lively sounds of discussion and debate. Stairways wend ever higher, while passing the Nymphaeum, a series of water features worked into the base of the plaza atop which the rostra perches. A Nymphaeum, or Nymphaeon, in ancient Greece and Rome, was a monument consecrated to the nymphs, especially those of springs. When at last you reach the seat of the Forum in Charlian, the edifice is every bit as regal as it appears from the harbor. In his wisdom, Nuncrepf saw that each citizen of Charlian should be allowed a voice in matters of their community. By around the 150th year of the Sixth Astral Era, however, the city had expanded considerably. In the Ecclesia, too many voices clamored in debate. Though it was clear a new system was needed, the Charlians clung adamantly to their tradition. This met with failure, and in 201 they decided upon a new form of governance. Now, the nation would be led by the Forum, a body of 99 members. Each Charlian of age would cast a vote to elect members from amongst his peers. The Forum currently hold their sessions in the Rostra, a word of Roman origins meaning a raised platform on which a person stands to make a public speech. In our world, the Rostra was indeed a large platform built in the city of Rome that stood during the Republican and Imperial periods. Speakers would stand on the Rostra and face towards the Senate House to deliver orations to those gathered in between. 
Nuncref's ecclesia was a similar word, of Greek origin, meaning a political assembly or gathering of those summoned. Yet, other historical definitions of the word can carry a religious connotation, more akin to a congregation or gathering of people that compose a united body of faith. The once cacophonous open assembly of Nuncref's era is past. Now, 99 seats rigidly line the spiraling rows of the Rostra's inner chamber. But will those sitting in them learn to bend before the rest of the world breaks? Beneath the lofty heights of the Rostra's inflexible judgment is the Archon's design Aetherite Plaza. It sports three locations of note, the Agora, the Confluence, and the Baldessian Annex. Let's stroll first through the Agora. The word Agora comes from our world's early Greek history. Freeborn citizens often gathered in the Agora or to hear statements of the ruling king or council. Later, the Agora also served as a marketplace, where merchants kept stalls or shops to sell their goods amid colonnades. This attracted artisans, who built workshops nearby. From these twin functions of the Agora as a political and a commercial spot came the two Greek verbs, agorazo, I shop, and agorevo, I speak in public. Both activities can be found in abundance between the Agora's colonnades. Across from the stalls, two buildings gaze out at the bustling marketplace, including one which seems to be home to artisans of a unique kind, those that craft aetherites. Through long years of studying ether and magic, Charlian scholars have mastered the secrets of traversing the life stream through aetherites. Indeed, by building and maintaining Eorzea's aethernet, they have secured a steady source of foreign currency. Encyclopedia Eorzea. The confluence is a word meaning the junction of two rivers, or an act or process of merging. As aetherites allow you to merge with the life stream and flow safely through it until you arrive at another anchoring location, the name seems appropriate to this building's area of focus. In truth, aetherites have been present throughout the world for far longer than the modern era. Not even the Charlians know their origin, though some speculate that the Alligans may be responsible. In the modern age, when the fledgling nations began to rebuild after the Calamity, many based their new settlements around existing Aetherites. Charlian scholars were able to repair and adapt these crystals, eventually creating new Aetherites of their own, and even going so far as to open an Aetherite factory in the now-abandoned colony of Charlian. Situated beside the confluence is... The Baldessian Annex. The Students of Baldessian are a Charlian organization of scholars, originally based on the Isle of Val and founded by Galef Baldessian. Patriarch of the prestigious House Baldessian, in his youth, Galef yearned to see the wider world, and to that end traveled distant lands with his three brave companions. Their journeys and subsequent experiences spurred Galef to use his considerable resources to purchase the deserted Isle of Val off the east coast of Charlian, where he and his comrades set about building various research facilities. Galef also financed several orphanages and funded the education of promising young people. Amidst the orphans taken in by his efforts, Galef encountered a bright child named Kryl and adopted her as his daughter. The Isle of Val was home to the students of Baldessian until it was presumably destroyed by an unknown magic. Recently, the island was rediscovered in a completely different location and referred to mistakenly as a new island, the forbidden land Eureka. Unfortunately, due to the events that had led to its disappearance, Galef and his students stationed there had been lost. Of the original members, few remain. Adventurers may have heard of several survivors, including Kryl Meyer Baldessian, Ejika Tsunjika, and Graha Tia. Shunned because of the red Alligan eye Graha had inherited through his bloodline, the Makote studied in Charlian to learn the origin of the trait, armed with naught save the many stories he had inherited from his ancestors. It was this study that saw him admitted to the students of Baldessian. While the students of Baldessian no longer call the relocated Isle of Val home, the name of the Baldessian Annex carries implications of being a building joined to or associated with the main building. So, it is possible that the organization had an offshoot on the main island that now continues Galef Baldessian's legacy. 
But Galef's school of thought was far from the only school present in Charlian. Walking through tranquility, the wooded area spanning the Archon's design in the prestigious studium, it's typical to see students strolling casually and taking in the fresh air. Those that wish to maintain their focus between lectures, however, head to the silent Monopteros, a word meaning a structure composed of a circular colonnade supporting a roof, but without any walls. Presumably, the silent part of the name implies a code of quiet amidst the stone pillars. Just beyond Tranquility's greenery rises the shape of the world's most prestigious place of learning, the Studium. The city of Charlian flourished under the motto, Knowledge Seeks No Man, a sentiment encouraging all to actively seek out even the most obscure knowledge for themselves. A number of academies sprang up over the years, allowing the nation's people to do just that, by expanding their minds through scholarship. Foremost of the many academies of Charlian, the Studium was founded in 432 of the Sixth Astral Era by the first Archons to be recognized in the nation's history, who had adopted the title of Archon in honor of Nuncrep Nuncrepsen and his companions, instructing pupils in everything from ethereal studies to astromancy. The Studium likewise encourages them to learn about the arcane and the occult, and has produced a great many Archons over the ages. The Studium has also made numerous discoveries that have helped Eorzea as well, including unlocking the lost secrets of travel by Aetherite. Within the entryway, Thaliac's Ewer spills the water of knowledge in a continual rush, allowing all who are willing to receive it to metaphorically reach in and fill their cup till it overflows. Either wing of the massive structure contains lecture halls and practical labs, including at least one area that seems dedicated to the perfection of cuisine, no matter how little the culinary arts are given credence outside the studium's walls. But where would Charlian scholars study, if not the library? Only steps away from the studium is the equally breathtaking Numenon. As we walk through the ground floor of the Numenon, surrounded by countless tomes of knowledge, we ourselves should take a moment to crack open a book and inquire as to the origins of the Numenon's name. In Earth's philosophy, a noumenon is a theoretical object or event that exists independently of human sense or perception. That is, something that cannot be perceived or understood by us with any of the senses at our disposal. The term noumenon is generally used in contrast to the term phenomenon, which refers to any object or event that is perceptible by our senses. This concept was posited by the German philosopher Immanuel Kant, and was a facet of his philosophical system of transcendental idealism. While I didn't specialize in philosophical scholarship like many of those studying at Charlian Studium, my understanding is that Kant also makes a distinction between what he calls positive and negative noumena. Negative noumena being things so far beyond our sensory ability that we have no chance of understanding what they could be. And positive noumena, Intangible forces we might have enough context of in our world to understand, but only if we had the right senses to perceive them. Kant claims these positive noumena could only be comprehended if humanity acquired a special, non-sensory faculty, which he describes as intellectual intuition. All of these are merely musings based on our world's history of thought. But in the world of Eorzea, it may be possible that the Echo fits the description of such a special extrasensory faculty. In a more literal exploration of the facility, industrious mammoths aid the librarians throughout the library's numerous floors. Magical pathways, characteristic of Charlian structures, make traversing the unconventional levels possible, especially considering that the Numenon's levels continue ever downwards to untold depths. It's possible the lowest levels of the Numenon possess forbidden tomes or hidden knowledge reserved only for the eyes of Archons, much like the Great Goobal Library in the Hinterlands. It's also rumored that the rarest tomes stored in Goobal's upper room were saved and relocated to Old Charlian during the exodus of the former city-state, perhaps finding a new home on these very shelves. Following the paths back down the hillside, we turn away from lecture halls and dusty tomes to venture to the Scholar's Harbor, Periodically, a gentle snow begins to fall, reminding all that although an island nation, Charlian is still located in the northern hemisphere of the planet Hydaelyn. 
The Scholar's Harbor is ever blessed by the wise auspices of Thaliac's likeness, who freely pours forth the waters of knowledge from his ewer. The Charlians first voted to elect Thaliac as their patron deity in the days of the Ecclesia. Thaliac, ruler of rivers, wisdom, and the god of knowledge, is the guardian deity of Charlian. In a literal sense, the colonnade-lined walkway leading up to Thaliac's stoa is a clear example of the architectural meaning of the word, namely, a freestanding colonnade or covered walkway. But the word stoa more abstractly carries connections to an ancient Greek school of philosophy, started by the philosopher Zeno of Citium, that of Stoicism. The philosophy earned its name thanks to the location of its founding, a stoa poikile, or painted porch. Stoicism teaches the development of self-control and fortitude as a means of overcoming destructive emotions. The philosophy holds that becoming a clear and unbiased thinker allows one to understand the great universal reason. According to its teachings, the path to happiness is found by using one's mind to understand the world and to do one's part in nature's plan, all while working together to treat others fairly and justly. Interestingly enough, the Stoics also upheld the virtue of sages in their time. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, defined the sage as one who has knowledge of the beginning and the end, and of that all-pervading reason which orders the universe in its determinate cycles to the end of time. Beside Thaliac's stoa, several other places of interest pepper the busy harbor. It's clear that the small building known as Nuenkrepf's site is a nod to the founder of the nation, though whether it alludes to the vision he glimpsed through astrology or to the place he decided he and his followers would settle is less certain. Further down the path, the local tavern The Last Stand carries an enigmatic name for a rather mundane setting. Is it encouraging patrons to refuse to admit defeat while engaged in drinking? Or could it be a more obtuse reference to the military concept? A last stand is often made because the defending force realizes or believes the benefits of fighting outweigh the benefits of retreat or surrender. While there were several notable last stands in ancient Greek history, none seem connected. On the other side of the harbor, the peristyle is composed of a row of columns surrounding a courtyard, which appears to have several artisanal stalls. Directly beside it is worldly affairs, likely the equivalent of a harbor master or another figure that liaisons with the outside world. And just beyond either structure, a ship rocks on the water that looks suspiciously of Limson make. Just as the original 12 Archons at last found their journey's end in what would become Old Charlian, the residential district of the city likewise offers a fitting end for the final stretch of our tour. Though smaller homes are speckled across the hills, leaving room for nature's beauty to grow organically between the white stone buildings, none can compare to the sprawling estate in the northernmost part of the district. The Leveilleur estate is home to members of House Leveilleur, currently Fortuneau Leveilleur and his wife Améléance. Before them, the estate was once home to his father, the highly respected Archon Louis-Soit Leveilleur. Louis-Soit Leveilleur was born in Old Charlian. In his youth, he was fierce rivals with the sorceress Matoya, but the Archon formed many other relationships over the course of his life with notable figures of Eorzea's current day and age. Louis-Soit would take on several students, who became Archons in their own right, including Papalimo Totolimo and Uriange Agarel. Sometime later, Louis Swa met Thancred Waters in Limsa Lominsa. When the young boy failed to snatch his purse, Louis Swa offered him the opportunity to use his agility for the sake of his fellow man, and brought him to Charlian as an apprentice. After the city-state of Alamigo fell to the Garlian Empire, Louis Swa and Papalimo's tireless efforts saw a group of refugees, including future Archon Ida Hext and her sister Lise, granted sanctuary in the Charlian colony, even as it itself was readied for exodus. The Archon once said, To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. And such a passive stance will not, I fear, take us far upon the path to progress. Archon louis tales from the calamity in louis wake. Holding true to these beliefs, louis founded a sect called the Circle of Knowing, so he could travel to Eorzea and intervene in the Seventh Umbral Calamity without facing the Forum's wrath. In the desperate confrontation with Bahamut, louis attempted to call upon the powers of the Twelve to re-imprison the Elder Primal. The spell failed. 
But as Louis Swa awaited his fate at Bahamut's hands, he received a vision from the Twelve and was infused with ether. This, plus the fervent prayers of the people of Eorzea for salvation, transformed him into the primal phoenix, allowing him to defeat Bahamut before he himself vanished. This is a secret only his surviving grandchildren and the Warrior of Light know. After his disappearance, the remaining Circle of Knowing followed Louis Soi's last wish and joined with a faction led by Minfilia Ward, the Path of the Twelve. Together, these two factions would become the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. In stark contrast to his father, Fauchino Leveilleur is a member of the Forum and representative of the conservative Bibliotech faction. Fauchino carries a deep respect of Charlian's founding father, Nuncrepf Nuncrepfsen, and eschews war as the pursuit of barbarians. He upholds that societal advancement should be made through wisdom and reason alone. Because of his father's choice to immerse himself in the affairs and conflicts of Eorzea, the two had a strained relationship prior to Louis Soi's death. Though he and his wife now live in the Leveyer's ancestral home, the couple resided in the city-state of Charlian at the time when the wolves of the Garlian Empire descended upon Alamigo. While his father dove into Alamigo to rescue fleeing refugees, it was Forchino and his fellows who attempted to parlay a peace with the Empire. In the bitter wake of failure, they saw no recourse but to forsake the colony they had built within the borders of the war-threatened realm. Following five years of painstaking preparation, the plan to evacuate the settlement's entire population to the northern archipelago of their homeland was put into motion. During this time, Amelianse gave birth to twins, who the couple named Alice and Alphino. The twins spent most of their formative years in Old Charlian, and were accepted into the studium at the young age of 11. They've been away from the estate for some years, having journeyed to Eorzea following the calamity to discover for themselves what happened to their grandfather. Since then, the pair haven't returned to these sparkling halls or spoken to their father, who sees in them the same spirit that led to his own father's demise. When the twins do write, it's their mother who answers. Recently, they were briefly reunited with their sire, but the meeting was not what either of them was hoping. By espousing such barbaric notions, you subvert the teachings of Charlian and place all we have worked for in jeopardy. Alphino, Alizé, as of this moment, you shall no longer bear the name of Leveilleur. What? Father. How you choose to live your lives is no longer my concern. If you wish to walk the path of ruin, I will not stand in your way. Thus concludes our tour of Old Charlian. Again, I'm Rook, and it was my pleasure to be your lore-obsessed tour guide today. When you're able to visit in person, this shining city of knowledge will undoubtedly captivate and fascinate you in equal measure. Until then, the harbor will remain quiet, awaiting adventurers from far and wide to discover the hidden knowledge within. Be sure to tip your tour guide by liking or subscribing, and thank you so much for listening! If you enjoyed the content, check out the rest of my Endwalker Media Tour playlist, which also includes coverage of new features, jobs, glamour, and lore tours of Garlemald and Thavnair. Thank you as well to Square Enix for this opportunity, like so much thank you. <laughs> Just a reminder, all footage shown in this video is still in development and subject to change. Visit Old Charlian in person when Endwalker releases, coming November 23rd, 2021, with early access starting November 19th.